welcome to our lecture on database design part 3 this week being our fall break week i am making a somewhat shorter lecture and you'll also be probably happy to know that i am not assigning any homework for this lecture and i'll bundle any homework connected to this lecture uh, to this week into our next week's program so this is to just give you a little bit of a break a recap on things that we have done so far in design and so on I didn't want to add uh, almost uh, I've, I've not added anything new I think I've just recapped and reviewed everything that we have done so far try to go a little deeper so we know this diagram very well right now and as of now we are still looking at database design and uh, we're just going deeper and deeper into it. We'll do one more week of database design before we have our test on database design. Okay, let's my, uh, recap key migration. Uh, during our Thursday classes, some people have asked me questions about key migration and uh, it seems to me that the concept is still a little hazy in some people's minds. So I thought it would be a good idea for us to revisit that topic. Okay, so when do we use key migration? Let's consider a different example from what we had looked at earlier. Let's say we've got a, a company that has several buildings. And of course, I show three buildings here. Each building has several rooms. Okay, now buildings are identified, let's say, by a building ID or a building number as shown here, 200, 300, 500. And the individual rooms within each building are numbered. So for example, I've shown here with room numbers 301, 501 in each of the buildings. So we've seen that. Now, the room ID, let's say, is our room number is the uh, is an attribute of the entity type room. So we've got two entity types, building and room. Building is identified by a building ID and every room has a room number associated with it. Okay, so this particular room right here, it refers to building 200 room 501. Whereas this room here refers to building 300 room 501. Okay, so it's the room number is the same it's 501, but it's in a different building. Okay, so if I just come along and say, I want to go to room 501, then nobody will be able to help you unless you're also able to tell them the building number. Okay, so the primary key for room is jointly identified by building ID and room number. Together, they make up the primary key for room because across the company, take any particular room we can identify the room we cannot identify the room just by the room number you have to tell me what is the building id and then the room number then we can say okay that's the room you're talking about so a room is uniquely identified only by the combination of building id and room number okay so therefore our entity relationship diagram is going to look like this you've got building with some attributes you've got room with some attributes and you've got the relationship and clearly uh, every building doesn't have to have a room it's possible that some buildings are factory buildings and they don't have any office rooms of the kind we are talking about of course every room has to be in some building or other that is fine it's a one-to-many relationship because a building can have many rooms but a room can be only in one building. So it's a one to many. So you see the crow foot here. Uh, the, notice that we have used the key migration notation here because the primary key for room is building ID combined with room number. Together, they make up the primary key. And therefore, we have to indicate the fact that room number, uh, building ID is part of the primary key by putting the key migration notation right here okay so that's really one example of using key migration notation okay so that's why we use key migration in this example
okay so now your turn to migrate or not migrate so I'm going to give a couple of examples here and for each of those examples you have to think a little bit and find out whether key migration is involved in that example or not in that situation or not okay so we're saying a school keeps seven and loans them out to students for the duration of a course okay each student could have zero or more books on loan at any point in time each book can be loaned to at most one student okay so therefore it's possible that there is a student who has not taken any books and it's also possible that there is a book which is not assigned to any student and each student has a unique student ID each textbook has a unique textbook ID okay in other words the primary key for student is student ID the primary key for textbook is textbook ID and each textbook has its own unique textbook ID okay so think about it a little bit maybe you should go ahead and draw the entity relationship diagram for this situation and see if the key migration notation is required here or not as usual I guess you should pause the video get your answer and only then continue the video okay so I assume that you have got down your answer the ER diagram looks like this and of course as we said uh, student and textbook have optional participation in the relationship so the whole line is dashed I have also included some reasonable names for the relationship on both sides and of course we do not have the key migration notation here why don't we have it well textbook has its own primary key something that can uniquely identify each textbook each textbook has its own textbook ID and a textbook is uniquely identified by the textbook ID so the primary key for textbook is textbook ID doesn't need any help from any other entity type and therefore there is no need for key migration at all okay now don't confuse key migration with foreign key of course textbook is going to have the student as a foreign key that it's going to have because it's a one-to-many relationship textbook is going to have student ID as a foreign key but that foreign key is just an attribute in textbook it's not going to be part of the primary key okay so the question is to uh, add migration or not and in this example our answer is no we don't need key migration in this example let's consider the next one the company has several employees and several customers each customer is assigned to one employee to serve as the sales rep for that customer okay so each customer has one employee as a sales rep and of course each employee might be the sales rep for zero or more customers okay so once again I would uh, go ahead and say pause the video draw the ER diagram for this make up some attributes make up the primary key for each of them and then see if key migration notation is useful here or not okay so I assume you now have the I'm giving you here some additional information as well each employee has a unique employee ID and each customer has a unique customer ID I assume you must have made this assumption as well so this is the ER diagram we land up with the question is do we need key migration notation here or not okay so I assume that you have resolved the issue when you drew the diagram the ERD so the point is does the, any either of these two entities does it require anything other than its own ID to be the primary key we are clearly told that every employee has a unique employee ID okay so employee is self-sufficient with respect to primary key we are also told that each customer has a unique customer ID okay so that is also clear 
customer entity type does not require the help of any other entity type to make up its primary key and therefore so like before is we don't need key migration we don't need the key migration notation here as well now while we are on this topic there's one other point i'd like to reiterate is something that i had mentioned earlier now when you're given a situation like this a company has several employees and several customers etc etc now some people have a doubt as to say uh, and they ask well is company going to be an entity type in my diagram okay after all company is a noun as well is it going to be an entity type in our diagram okay from based on what i had discussed earlier company does not need to be an entity type on this diagram because you're talking about the model for a particular company everything that you're going to do is happening inside the company so in some sense every entity type will have a relationship to company if you make company an entity type but the important point is does company have instances okay something is going to be an entity type only if you can think of several instances of that entity type for example employee you can think of lots of instances of employee customer you can think of lots of instances of customer can you think of lots of instances of company for this situation of course in general there are lots of companies so the company entity type in general has lots of instances but in this example we are talking about a specific company therefore there are no instances there's just one instance of this company okay so we're not talking about multiple instances therefore you don't need an entity type for company you could have it it would just crowd up the diagram and make no sense whatsoever it won't add any value to the diagram okay so for example you could say company has many employees company has many customers and you could have that as a third entity type but it doesn't help okay so that's about this scenario let's consider one more scenario i've got computer and its product id let's say is 100 and i have three instances of computer okay the situation we are talking about is you've got products and instances of those products okay so there are two products one is called computer and the other is called TV right those are just instances of the entity type product in other words we've got two entity types product and item okay product is just the generic name of products like computer TV laptop etc etc okay so those are all products but for every product I have got several items of that product right so for computer i've got three units of computer and each unit has its own serial number for tv i've got four units of tv in stock and each unit has its own id okay now i've got this entity relationship diagram not quite correct because this line here has to be solid or dashed so that's a mistake on my part this should be a solid line so let's try and see if i can fix that problem okay so i'm going to just make this line completely solid and not leave it dashed So I need this to be a solid line because every item, of course, has to be an item of a particular product. So that's a solid line. Okay, so that's the revised diagram. So the point here is I've got several products. The company deals with several products. For example, 
computer, TV, et cetera, et cetera. And for each product, the company has several units which are in stock. Okay, a product is identified uniquely by a product ID and the item of a product has an attribute called serial number which is what you're seeing here 101, 123, 300, then 85, 6, 323, 101. Okay, now in this scenario, do we need key migration or not? Okay, think about this and pause the video, think about your answer, think about the explanation for the answer and then continue the video. Okay, assuming you're ready now. Now think about this. How do you uniquely identify an item? Can I just uniquely identify an item by its serial number? Say item 101. Well, the same serial number occurs in multiple products. For example, there is a computer with serial 101. There is also a TV with serial number 101. There is a TV with serial number 123. There is also a computer with 100 serial number 123. So the serial number by itself does not uniquely identify an item. But when you say I'm talking about computer with serial number 101, then we know we are talking about this particular computer. If I say I'm talking about the TV with serial number 101, I'm talking about this TV. Okay, so the combination of product ID and serial number is what uniquely identifies a particular item. Okay, and therefore, of course, we do need key migration notation here, and that's what I've just tagged on 